Hello, everybody, and welcome to our review of Frozen 2 here on Phantom Entertainment. I'm Dan Merle. I'm Roth Cornett, and I am excited to talk about this, actually, Dan, because this is a rare case, and there are going to be many who will disagree with me that I like the sequel just a little bit better than I like the original movie. I will agree with you with an asterisk, which okay. is that I think the music oh, is better in the first movie. But I like this better as a movie. I, I, I always thought the first Frozen was okay yeah. with a great song in the middle of it. And actually, I like several of the songs in the first Frozen. I think this one has a, a lot of uh, mostly okay music, a couple standout numbers, uh, but I like the movie better. So I love it's like, this one. Yeah, I liked it better. Story wise, yeah. character wise, I like this one more than the first one. So I will confess that I don't really think that I am the world's best predictor at what will be a hot musical number that year. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I, I do think the people behind these Disney films are under a tremendous amount of pressure because you are expected to deliver hits. You know, that is just the expectation that, that sits with you, that you're going to deliver five or seven hits out of any one movie, which is hard enough for any musician to do mm -hmm. um, over the course of an entire career. So I think that's tricky. Does it have a let it go? I don't know that mm -hmm. it does. But I also know that as I was walking out of the theater, there were a number of different groups that were already humming some of the tunes from the movie, which is why I don't think I'm that good at this, because I couldn't remember which songs they were. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there are a couple that were obviously tagged as yeah. the radio hits uh, for the musical. Um, my favorite two were actually character songs, one from Olaf, oh, one yeah. from Hans and Sven. Uh, who I think they they're did both a great funny numbers. 80s riff. Yes, it's an 80s riff. Those were the ones that I liked the best just because they were very funny character pieces in the movie itself. Um, but it, generally, I connected to this much more on a level of character. I think that they built on the story from the first one. There were a couple of times where the story looked like it was going to take a turn that I thought was going to retcon a few things. It did not end up doing that. Um, it did what I think a lot of sequels should do, which is to take the story from the first one, add some depth to it, add some layering to it, fill in a little bit of the the background details, but don't do it in a way that makes the first movie seem unnecessary or like they're trying to shoehorn something in there awkwardly. Mm -hmm. I really do think you explore the relationship between Anna and Elsa, where they go in the future, uh, how they're adjusting to their lives. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Not one of my favorite movies of the year, but yeah. I liked it. I liked it a lot. And and I think if I were a parent, I would be really glad that this franchise exists. Because I will say with, with the first Frozen, um, I, I do think that there's something there thematically that very few other films for kids touch on. Mm -hmm. um, and that it, that it is incredibly related to how uh, sisters deal with each other, um, sort of. And, and, and then by extension, women and their relationships with each other. But also just... In a, in a broad human to, um, respect, sort of suppressing parts of yourself because they feel unsafe in the world. And that might be a part of yourself that is weird, um, or it may be a part of yourself that is different than others. And that translates to like power, right? In its purest form, I think the essence of who you are as an individual, whether that's read as a foible or dangerous, is your greatest power. For me, I'm, I have written about this before, but um, I, so I won't get too deeply into it. I'm dyslexic. And as a kid, um, that was really challenging for me. But then later, as I grew, that became sort of my superpower because I, I felt like I understood that my brain saw the world in a different way mm -hmm. than maybe necessarily everyone around me did. So perhaps I could offer a perspective or an insight that was valuable. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for Elsa, that journey is very relatable on a human level. Um, and they take that further in this film because they, they also, in this film, they continue to look at what that means for her, but they also look at what does that mean for Anna, who in comparison to her sister is just like the ordinary one, you know? And they look at what's extraordinary in that too, mm -hmm. in this movie, so that everyone is honored and our differences are honored, even starting in the opening sequence when they're playing with their dolls. Um, and Elsa has one perspective about what she wants the story to culminate in, and Anna has another. Mm -hmm. And both of them are treated with respect. And um, there, I think there's a depth to Frozen, I honestly do, that um, that many Pixar films offer, but certainly that is unique in this space of these kinds of relationships. So 
it expands in this film. It takes it further. Their choices are very different, but their choices are right for them. There is an element to the storyline and their origin in terms of their parenting and their mom mm -hmm. that I, I think might be tricky in some respects. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't want to get into it now because I don't want to talk about spoilers, but it's like their heritage sort of comes in a little bit more. Um, and I think that might be tricky in some respects, but I kind of just don't, I don't think we should talk about it now. But as a whole, this is a great character continuation. Yeah. Um, this is a furthering of who they are, and it's a furthering of our understanding of them. Um, and I think it opens the space for kids, um, boys and girls, to talk about the idea that who they want to be in the world is can be very different than their brother, their sister, their friends, um, and still okay. Yeah, and and I think also you know when you look at Disney animation right now, you, you I, I, there's a perception I think that Pixar is pumping out the prestige pictures, and you know Disney animation is doing fine. Disney animation is actually I think on a pretty good streak. Yeah. When you look at Moana, when you look at Zootopia, when you look at this film, I think even looking at Ralph Breaks the Internet, which I really enjoyed uh, as well. Um, going back the last few years, it's hard to point at a, a real misfire from the animation arm of Disney in the last few years, which you can't even really say about Pixar because you've got the good dinosaur yeah. sitting out there from, you know, a, a few years ago. Um, I, I really do think that, you know, Pixar sucks up the oxygen and money uh, a lot yeah. in the animated space. And you also obviously have other players like DreamWorks, Sony with Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse last year, obviously one of the best movies of the year. But I think the Disney animation, almost because they're the brand name, uh, gets overlooked in some respects. Um, they're churning out some some pretty good work uh, consistently. Script. Smart, smart scripts, um, and I think again because of the whole Pixar thing, people sort of have, have Pixar. That's their thing. Um, but I, th I think you could have gone very easily more of a cash grab with this. You just trot out the characters. You do a similar thing of like you know you another another riff on the Frankenstein thing of like get her with the pitchforks and and Elsa's got to go on the run again or whatever else. You could have done that and probably made as much money or mm -hmm. more. Who knows? But I, I, I think what really what you want from a sequel is something that uh, that does show uh, largely because you have the same creative team returning for this movie that did the last film a real um, desire to to build on what came before and I think that's what you know Frozen is obviously I think the target audience is a little younger than me. Just a hair. Just a hair younger. But I will say, even the stuff that is more overtly aimed at kids, like Olaf, uh, I have a very little threshold for characters that I that I feel like a movie is telling me are cute or funny. So Olaf could have been a very grating thing, so mm -hmm. I don't like the minions. But uh, the character of Olaf, even, even though he is probably the most overtly there for kids, is also the funniest character in this movie for adults because he gives that extra layer of Almost not self awareness in a wink to the camera way, but self awareness of what the movie is, what's going on, yeah. the absurdity of the story, yeah. uh, the absurdity of the, the you know how big these things are, and there are even moments with Elsa where she sort of acknowledges. Oh, she makes what's fun been of, going she on makes fun of herself. of herself. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think that's really what separates this from a lot of other animated yeah. films and animated sequels uh, in that there really does seem to be a desire there to, 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 to really and truly advance the story and build on the previous film, and that's what the best sequels do, and I think this one uh, delivers that. I agree, and it, it does. It's a little, it's self-referential, mm -hmm. um, but without like kind of being obstructionist to this story, mm -hmm. where it's it's talking about itself so much that it's actually not doing much else. Um, it's self-referential in the way that we are as human beings. You know, I can make fun of myself, and um, so she makes fun of herself a little bit, and and. And Olaf makes fun of their circumstances, but what I think is even smarter than that, it's like he's growing up mm -hmm. and he's becoming more self-aware as an entity. There's a heartbreaking moment with Olaf, mm. um, but he, th in his growing up, he's able to comment on what it means to be an adult in the world, yeah. um, which is happening for Anna and Elsa in separate ways, too, as they become more and more their, their fully formed selves. But also, I think another thing this movie does that's smart is like, look, a lot of the times in Disney movies that are particularly with Disney princess movies, the prince is entirely uninteresting. It's a weird reversal where the prince is like the cipher, you mm -hmm. know, and like just has no character. But in this case, there's a couple of movies that they started to turn that around, starting with Tangled. 
Um, but in this case, Kristoff has something to do. He grows. He has a shining moment. And what's even better is that I think they portray really beautifully what happens in romantic relationships, which is where people are trying so hard to connect and are so scared that they're not loved that you disconnect because you misunderstand what the other person is saying to you. Mm -hmm. um, and they do this in a really funny way. Yeah. And it's a, in a way that I think is funny for kids, but adults really get what's going on. Um, I think it's a special movie. I honestly do. It is aimed at kids. I hope they like it. They did in the theater that we were in. They seem to. They seem to enjoy um, it, yeah. Yeah, but I think this one really does work for adults, too. Um, and I think it opens the door for some some not too heavy, but interesting conversations with parents yeah. and kids. I think I might have gotten Christoph's names wrong earlier, but that's did, all right. Oh, what did I we? I think I said Hans. Was he the bad guy from the first one? Oh, yeah, he's the, he's the jerk. Was yeah. he the jerk? Maybe. I don't well, know. Well, we're not fine. As I mentioned, uh, I'll ask a six or seven year old. They'll be able, they'll be able to school me on oh, Frozen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. The target audience is definitely kids. I think kids are going to love it, but it's still a recommendation for me. If you're taking kids, you're, you're I think you'll still enjoy it uh, and have a good time. And if you're a fan of Frozen, I think you'll enjoy it and have a good time. So, two recommendations to you for Frozen 2. It hits theaters this Friday, ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday next week, and is going to make. A lot of money. <laughs> yes. uh, so much money. It's going to make a lot of money uh, as we go into the holiday. We're going to build frame. a snowman of cash. A snowman. Snow mouse of cash. Full of cash. So much money. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, ah. we'll cover that next week on charting. But uh, this week, we are going to cover another film that's coming out. Not for uh, kids. That will be hitting, not for kids, definitely not for kids, <laughs> but we'll be hitting theaters next week again in advance of the Thanksgiving holiday here in North America. And that is Knives Out. You can stay tuned for that review very soon, right? here on Fandom Entertainment. Until then, thanks for watching.